Evolution is defined as change over time. And although Darwin is credited with being the father of evolution, and we'll talk more about him in a little bit, uh, ideas have been around since 300 BC. That is a long time. So um, with that, people way, way back in time knew that organisms changed, that nothing stayed the same. Um, one of the gentlemen that we looked at that was before Darwin as well was a man named Lamarck. And Lamarck, he had a, a hypothesis almost called the inheritance of acquired characteristics. What this means is that uh, you had an organism that would use and use and use something, uh, say a giraffe would stretch and stretch and stretch its neck. And because of that, it would be able to pass on a longer neck to its offspring. Now we know today that that is not true. He did not have any idea of what DNA was and what it did for a person. Um, so he was on the right track but he did not um, hit the nail quite on the head. So his giraffes and his inheritance of acquired characteristics uh, is not true. Uh, so that brings us ahead to Charles Darwin. Now Charles Darwin, as I mentioned before, was a young man. His father, he really wanted him to be a doctor, something that would bring the family much um, wealth, much fame, and it would be a good profession. Well, Darwin did not want to do that. He wanted to follow his own dreams, and so he does what any young man would do in that time. He would run away. So he signed up on a ship called the HMS Beagle. And he sailed away in 1831. And this ship went to the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos Islands are famous for their diversity and uh, the organisms that live there. And while he was there, he got to document all of the things he saw. Charles Darwin, his role on the Beagle was a naturalist. A naturalist is pretty much the document uh, person. He's the one who documents everything. He draws, he observes, he sketches all of the living things and even some of the non-living things that they discovered on their voyage. So that was his job to do that. Um, when he did this, he saw lots of different things and it made him question and the scientist that he was, it led him to some Conclusions. Now, he knew these conclusions probably wouldn't be so popular because at the time that he was doing this, the church was very much uh, the head of state. He was very much in control. And so he knew that his beliefs would not be so popular because they would be viewed as heretic and not true uh, to going against what the Bible taught. Uh, and so being a very, very devout Christian man, he was troubled about it. He wrote the book and he put it aside for a while uh, until he was able to decide what to do with it. Uh, later on, there was a gentleman named Alfred Wallace that came along, a younger man who was doing some work uh, and also discovering some of the same things. So he put out an abstract, kind of a shortened version of what his paper was going to be about the same things that Darwin was talking about. Uh, and so Charles Darwin decided that he was going to put his paper out there, even though he knew it would not be favorable, even though he knew that um, he knew that it wouldn't be looked upon as a factual document, at least for not some time. Uh, but he did it because if he wasn't the only one that was coming up with these ideas, maybe there was something to them. Uh, and so he wrote it, and um, he wanted to make sure everyone knew, however, that he did not do that lightly. 